Hello everyone. This is the 27th part of the story, I'm Voldemort. Chapter 178, Mama Disappears. When Tom woke up in his room, confused about how he arrived there, he stood up and rushed back to his mother's quarters. After searching every room for the ancient one, Tom found a note left by her bedside table. Dear, Tom. Due to unlinking myself from the dark dimension, I've decided to prepare for a possible attack by Dormammu. I'm unsure as to whether he knows or not, but it's best to stay prepared either way. These preparations can be used for other entities that will no doubt invade Earth's sovereignty sooner or later, so nothing will go to waste. I'll return once everything is ready. You're in charge while I'm away. See you soon. Your mama. If even she doesn't know, then I should prepare as well. Tom thought as he folded up the letter and pocketed it. She's probably seen how Dr. Strange would have beaten Dormammu, so I won't bother trying to do that. I also don't have the time stone, so there's no point in even trying in the first place. Although Tom doesn't have to do much to get ready for Dormammu, as he trusts his mother to handle almost anything, he can still get some things done. Also, Dormammu will most likely employ some mindless ones that Tom could battle, so it's definitely best to prepare. The mindless ones are a race of humanoid beings that dwell in the dark dimension. Every one of them is a servant to Dormammu, obviously. Although those mindless ones won't be able to come unless Dormammu is already here, but that doesn't mean the people of Earth can't be tempted and infected by Dormammu's promise of power and immortality. The two best options for Tom right now are to link himself to the Shadow Dimension as its ruler and gaining control of All Black. Tom planned to ask the Ancient One about connecting himself to the Shadow Dimension, so that will have to wait until she surfaces again. Until then Tom could start working on gaining control of All Black. Having a god-slaying sword at his side will definitely come in handy. That sword is going to be hard to get under control. It's made from Null's shadow and spent its entire life alongside the murderous psychopath, so it's most likely impossible to gain control over All Black without some sort of mind control or replacement. Tom thought as he contemplated how to deal with this. Seeing as he missed a day of Hogwarts already, Tom decided to go to school and experiment with All Black after his responsibilities there are taken care of. Returning to Hogwarts early the next morning, Tom's professors asked him about his absence the day before. Of course, he went with his earlier excuse of being sick in his dorm room. After dealing with classes, clubs, and his followers, Tom paid a visit to the realm of death once again. Appearing in the dark outlined world ruled by Lady Death, Tom was greeted by his deathly servant. Welcome, Master. Did everything go well with the bald sorceress? Lady Death asked from her dark skeletal throne. Hello, Death. Tom greeted back with a smile on his face. Yes, but we're preparing for a possible attack from Dormammu just to be safe. If you want me to, I could go and deal with him for you? Lady Death asks as she crosses her legs seductively. Hearing Lady Death's offer, Tom thought it over for a moment and shook his head. No, thanks. I can't keep relying on you for things like this, or else it will never end. I also don't want to tip off any high-level entities of our involvement with each other. If you keep showing up to destroy all of my enemies, then conclusions will be made and dots will be connected. I'd rather not shine a big spotlight on Earth. At least not yet. Tom explains, getting an understanding nod from Lady Death. All right, is there anything else I can do for you? She asks, hoping to make herself useful. Yes, I think it's about time that I get All Black under control. Tom announces and looks to Lady Death questioningly. How has his stay in the realm of death been? At first, I decided to be merciful and allow that sword free reign in my realm, but that didn't last long as it couldn't control itself and tried to escape through one of my undead guards. Lady Death explains with a shake of her head. Where is it now? Tom asks, 
knowing Lady Death wouldn't allow All Black very much freedom after that. Locked in the dungeons of my palace. It made a lot of noise at first, but after a few days of isolation went by, I haven't heard much from it since. Lady Death says as an evil smile gracing her lips. Isolation tends to be the best punishment when you want to break someone. Once again, Lady Death proves to be a frightening entity to ever anger. You're sure that he's still there, right? Tom asks as a quiet dungeon could also mean an empty dungeon. Yes, would you like to go and see for yourself, or I could simply bring the sword here? Lady Death asked with a raised eyebrow. Bring it here. Tom chooses and Lady Death waves her hand, causing a pitch-black sword to appear. As soon as All Black appears, Lady Death gives Tom a look that said, I told you so. Tom just ignored her childish behavior and drew his attention towards the pitch-black sword before him. Hello again, All Black. Chapter 179 Experimenting Hello again, All Black. Tom greets the dark sword before him. As the sword appears in front of them, it lunges to the side and tries to fly out of an open window. Before it could get anywhere near the window, the sword disappears and appears right back in front of Tom and Lady Death. Where do you think you're going? Lady Death asks with a raised eyebrow as her arms cross in front of her. At the sound of Lady Death's voice reprimanding it, All Black started shaking and morphed into its humanoid shape. Prostrating on the ground, the monstrous black symbiote groveled in Lady Death's direction. Please forgive me. All Black spoke pathetically in its raspy deep voice. I don't know, you've tried escaping multiple times now and each time I hear the same thing. Please forgive me. I apologize, Lady Death. It will never happen again. Every time I hear your pathetic groveling, I grow less and less forgiving. Lady Death says as her deathly aura spikes, pressuring All Black into a small black puddle on the throne room's floor. Let's not waste too much time, all right? I have classes tomorrow morning and I would like to get some sleep tonight. Tom says to Lady Death. Her aura that once surrounded and pressurized all black vanished, causing the black sludge-like puddle to morph back into its humanoid form. Panting on the ground exhausted and afraid, all black kept his head down bowing in Lady Death's direction. Would you like any help getting this little guy under control? Lady Death asks as if All Black were nothing more than a puny insect. All Black flinches at Lady Death's words. He knows that whatever is in store for him isn't going to be good. Yes, I want to be able to wield All Black, but I don't trust it not to betray me the second it gets free of your watch. Do you have any ideas on how to get it under control? I was thinking of either mind control, mind wiping or transferring another consciousness into the sword instead. Of course, if we were to do the last one, his current consciousness would need to be wiped or ejected somehow. As Tom says that he places his hand on his chin, pondering on what would be his best option. With every word out of Tom's mouth, All Black starts becoming more anxious and depressed. He has no way to escape nor can he fight back and these people are going to do who knows what to him. He truly felt like a helpless child in this situation. Worst of all, they keep talking about him as if he were nothing more than a thing. Calling him it and speaking like his life didn't matter at all. Hmm, we could remove its astral body and dispose of it, replacing it with a more compliant soul from the many dead souls that I rule over? Lady Death says, piquing Tom's interest immensely. That would be perfect but would another soul survive in a body that wasn't originally meant for them? Tom asks, hoping to cover all of the possible screw-ups that could occur. Well, I see no reason why it wouldn't work. Lady Death said after a brief moment of thought. We could test it out with one of the less worthy souls at first? That way if something goes wrong, we don't lose a good candidate for your new sentient sword. All right, let's try it out. Tom says excitedly as he steps toward All Black. Keep him still for me, will you? Also, 
keep his astral body from fleeing as well. Getting a nod from Lady Death, Tom steps in front of a frozen in place all black and strikes him with an open palm, knocking his astral body from his physical black sludge body. As Tom does this, all black's physical body reverts back into a puddle without any sort of form, sword like, humanoid, or otherwise. Peeking into the astral plane, Tom can see All Black's humanoid astral body bound tightly on deathly black chains. No matter how much he struggles for freedom, the chains hold tightly, keeping him firmly in place. Good work, Death. Keep him alive for now. I want to make sure this works before we get rid of him. Tom says, receiving an understanding nod from his deathly servant. You got it, Master. Do you have any request for our test subject, or should I just choose from the pool of souls with the most stains on their living records? Lady Death asks. Nah, just pick randomly, Tom says with an uncaring shrug. Nodding to her master, Lady Death snaps her fingers and the soul of an old man appears before her. Huh? Where am I? The man asks as he's never met Lady Death before nor has he been in her palace. Lady Black ignores the soul in favor of her master. This man was your average serial rapist slash murderer. Nothing special, but he'll do as a fine test subject. Lady Death explains. What? Test subject? The soul asks with an angry shout. After explaining everything to Tom, Lady Death grasped the souls by the neck and slammed it into the black puddle on the palace floor. The puddle started moving and slowly forming into the body shape of the man, whose soul was just slammed into the symbiote sludge. Huh? What happened? I feel kind of funny. The new symbiote said with a deep and distorted voice. Looking down at himself, the new symbiote started hyperventilating. What happened to me? He screamed in fear as he noticed his black sludge body. What did you do to me? Chapter 180 Experimenting 2 What did you do to me? The new symbiote screamed at Lady Death with fear and anger clear in its voice. Ignoring his question, Lady Death examines it and looks to her master. It seems to have worked. She states with a pleasant smile on her face. Hmm, yes but will it last? Also, can he transform into a sword still? Tom doesn't celebrate just yet, as anything could go wrong. Hey! Stop ignoring me! The symbiote screams in annoyance. Hmm, good point. Lady Death says as she turns her focus back to the new symbiote that's currently freaking out before them. Hey, Mongrel try to turn into a sword. As she commands him, the new symbiote starts shaking in anger. You fucking bitch. Who do you think you're talking to? He starts raging, not knowing who or what he's dealing with. Lady Death's eyebrow started twitching in anger at the gal of this bug to speak to her like this. Rest in peace. Tom thought as he watched the car crash that is about to unfold before him. Suddenly, Lady Death appears in front of the angry symbiote in an instant reaching out and grasping the symbiote by the neck with ease. Listen here, bug. Lady Death speaks softly with a simmering rage evident in her voice. You will do as I say and with a smile on your nasty little face, or I'll make the rest of your eternal afterlife an everlasting experience of torture. Do I make myself clear? Every word that leaves her mouth is laced with the power of death all of which is crashing down on the symbiote body of this rapist slash murderer. Why yes. He stutters out, not really affected by the hand squeezing his neck due to his symbiote body's malleability, but definitely affected by the power of death smashing down on him. Good. She says as she tosses him aside like rubbish. Now, do your best to change your new body into a sword. Not wanting to anger the scary woman any further, the symbiote tries its best to change into a sword but fails horribly. I, I don't think I can do this. He stutters with a fearful gaze planted on Lady Death. 
close your eyes. Tom says, drawing the new symbiote's attention. Huh? Who are you? He says, just noticing Tom's presence. That doesn't matter. Close your eyes. Tom repeats himself. You heard the man. Do as he says. Lady Death says, lighting a fire under the man, who immediately does as she says for fear of his afterlife. A all right, now what? He stutters again with his eyes closed. Now, picture a sword. A medieval style that's the darkest shade of black you can think of. Do you picture it? Tom asks, getting a hesitant nod from the sludge man. Good, now will yourself into the shape of that sword. You may not be used to it yet, but your body is a sort of fluid now. Shape that fluid into the sword you're picturing in your mind. After a few moments, the man slowly starts morphing into a bent and badly shaped medieval sword as black as night. It works. Practice seems to be needed, but that's understandable. Tom says with a smile on his face. Now, how do we test the longevity of this? We need to see if he will stay as all black for an extended period of time, or if the body will reject his soul somehow. Hearing that he passed whatever test they were running, the new all black reverted back to his human form with a content sigh. It was very uncomfortable as a sword. That makes sense. Should I send him to a dimension where time flies faster? That would be the fastest way to test this out. Lady Death offers after a moment's thought. Yeah, but make sure you tie him down and make sure others can't interact with him. Tom says, making sure his little experiment doesn't escape. Nodding her head she turns to the frightened symbiote and tosses him through a portal of her own making. On the other side of the portal is an empty white space. In that space sat the new All Black with a resigned look on his face. Black chains sprout from the white dimension, locking the symbiote into place. A barrier forms around his chained position, keeping any who passes by from interacting with him. If his soul were to be ejected from All Black's body, the chains will bind it, stopping him from escaping into the white dimension. See you in a few hundred years. Lady Death says with a wave of her hand. What? The new All Black screams in indignation as the portal closes, leaving him all alone in an empty white void. What's the time difference between here and there? Tom asks as he watches the portal close. Every minute here is about a hundred years there. Lady Death explains. Let's wait about five minutes and check up on him, sound good? Tom asks. Yeah, in the meantime, would you like a tour of my palace? I don't think I've shown you around before. She offers. Sure, how big is this place anyway? Tom asks as Lady Death escorts him out of the throne room. After a short five-minute tour that didn't even cover one by twentieth of the palace, Lady Death opens a portal to the white dimension. Peeking into the portal, they see an insane-looking symbiote singing lullabies to himself. I told you. Isolation is the best way to break someone. Lady Death says with an I told you so sort of voice. Chapter 181 Are You My Mommy? The second that the new All Black saw the portal with Tom and Lady Death peeking through, he stopped singing his lullabies and stared blankly at the portal. He stared at Tom and Lady Death shockingly. They stared back, waiting to see his reaction. Are you my mommy? He asked Lady Death with a tilt of his sludgy black head. Ignoring the obviously insane creature before him, Tom turns to Lady Death questioningly. So, he's insane from the isolation, not the integration into All Black's body, correct? Tom asks just to be sure. Yeah, I've punished many souls with isolation. This is definitely from isolation. I would know. Lady Death answers with a nod of her head. Good, then the experiment is a success. Tom exclaims with a happy smile on his face. Soon, he will be wielding one of the strongest swords in the universe, all black. Mommy? 
he says again with a sad look in his monstrous eyes. Can you bring him back into the throne room, so we can continue? Tom said, moving to take a seat in Lady Death's skeletal throne. While Lady Death drags him back into the throne room, closing the portal behind her, Tom pondered over who should be the one placed in All Black's body. There are a few people that Tom can think of off top of his head who would fit the bill as his sword. Tom's mother Mara Pigaunt would be a good choice, as she would be incredibly loyal to him. He is her son, after all. The only thing that could cause a problem with this would be the tension between his birth mother and his adoptive mother. Would they have a problem with each other? Tom wasn't sure but the possibility is out there. Then there's the option of using someone from the Harry Potter or Marvel Universe. The question is who would be the best options. For the Harry Potter world, the options are one of the founders Helga, Salazar, Godric, or Rowena, but they aren't the only options. There are two other options that Tom would find more appealing than the founders of Hogwarts. These are Merlin Emrys and Arthur Pendragon. Merlin Emrys, because of his skill in magic alongside his enormous amount of knowledge and experience as a royal advisor. Arthur Pendragon, because of his skill with the sword, which would be perfect for this as he would become a sword, alongside his experience and knowledge as a king. No one else in the wizarding world would be a viable choice. Morgana Le Fay would be a good candidate if she weren't an evil. Which that would most likely betray Tom at the first chance she was given. Grindelwald and Dumbledore would betray him as well. Grindelwald, for whatever evil plans hatch in his mind, and Dumbledore because he will think it's for the greater good or whatever. The three brothers from the story of the Deathly Hallows didn't seem that powerful without their hallows to lean on, so Tom didn't even think of using one of them. Then we have Marvel characters, which Tom knows very little of. He only ever watched the movies so he had very few options to choose from. In fact, he could only think of one good option. The best option Tom could think of from the Marvel side of the world would be Agamotto, who was the father of the mystic arts and the first Sorcerer Supreme. Not only was Agamotto the founder of the Masters of the Mystic Arts, but he also built the many sanctums around the world and created the Eye of Agamotto, which houses the Time Stone. The question is would Agamotto want to serve him as a sword? Tom doesn't think so. Actually, Tom doesn't think that the majority of these people would want to serve as his sword, except for his mother, of course. Then that leaves Tom with one other option, but it's a risky one. He could, with the consultation and help from Lady Death, use a piece of his soul, like a horcrux, and place that into the sword. The sword would be him, therefore the risk of betrayal would be far lower, but he would have to tear off a piece of his own soul, which is a big no-no in the Harry Potter universe. Just looking at the history of the original Tom Riddle aka Voldemort is a strong PSA showing why nobody should tamper with their soul. Although thanks to the symbiote's symbiotic bodies, Maybe Tom could piece the sword into his soul again, making it whole once more, except it would come along with all black as well. Kind of like a Zampakudo from Bleach, but without the Shirkai and Bankai. Just a sword attached to his soul. It would definitely keep the sword safe from any theft. Hmm, that might work. The more Tom thought about this, the more he liked the idea. He would have to be careful and consult Lady Death and the Ancient One to be safe, but the idea seems workable. The only problems that need to be worked out are severing a piece of his soul without a, hurting himself or his psyche, and b, having to take an innocent life to do the split. Tom isn't a good guy, but neither is he evil either. He merely does as he wishes and lives by his own morals. One of those morals is killing innocent people for no reason whatsoever. It just doesn't sit well with him. He also needs to look into a way to connect All Black to his soul as well. Tom has a feeling that's going to be harder than it sounds. Although, maybe he could still use a dead soul and attach them to his soul as well? Having his mother or Arthur Pendragon as a sort of Zampakuto spirit would be interesting. Choices, choices, 
but first I have to figure out if any of this will work. Chapter 182 Choosing While thinking over what to do, Tom turned his attention toward Lady Death. She just brought the new insane All Black into the throne room and chained him in place. He was being noisy so Lady Death put up a soundproof barrier, blocking all sound from annoying her master. You can kill the Astral All Black now. We have no use for him anymore. Tom says, making sure they don't forget about him. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about that insect. Lady Death says as she waves her hand casually. Peeking into the astral plane, Tom watches a wave of deathly energy consume All Black's astral body, slowly eating him away until there's nothing left. It's done, Master. Lady Death reports, happy to serve her master in any way possible. I saw. Good work. Tom compliments as he decides to ask Lady Death for her input on his earlier thoughts. Now that this has been proven successful, we need to pick a soul to inhabit All Black's physical body. Do you think that your souls would be interested in serving me? I don't think the people that I have in mind would be willing. Hearing Tom's words, Lady Death couldn't help but agree. She may rule over the dead, but once they enter the land of the living, they would be out of her domain of control. Death has no power over the living. Only the dead. Who knows if any soul they choose would betray Tom the second they return to the material world. I'm not sure how to go about this, Master. Maybe we should pick someone you trust, like your mother? Lady Death shares her opinion after a moment's thought. Hmm, I thought of that as well but I would rather not disturb her afterlife if I don't absolutely have to. Tom thought as it felt like he may be desecrating his mother's soul. At first, he thought using her would be a good idea, but after thinking about it more and more, Tom started feeling dirty about the whole thing. His mother should rest peacefully, without any outside tampering. Seeing death become as stumped as he was, Tom returns to his thoughts. He thought of anyone that would fit the bill and be loyal to him in any way whatsoever. Even the tiniest bit of loyalty can be cultivated into a trusted servant, but no one among the dead seemed to fit the bill but his mother. After a bit of thinking, Tom was about to summon his mother to ask for her opinion, but he saw something that sparked a moment of brilliance in him. One of Lady Death's undead guards walked past the open throne room door, guarding the palace halls against any would-be intruders. Hmm, death? Tom called for his deathly servant, breaking her from her silent pondering. Yes, master? Lady Death answers from her position on Tom's left. Tell me about the undead you control. Would they heed your commands in the material world as well? Tom asks, getting a nod from his deathly servant. They are completely under my control no matter what plane or dimension they travel to. Lady Death explains as a look of realization appears on her face. Good, and All Black is a living being correct? Lady Death nods happily and Tom continues. So, he can be made into one of your undead soldiers? Yes. I would simply have to order him to follow your words as if they were mine, and you would have a loyal sword. Lady Death puts all the pieces of Tom's idea together with an excited smile. Exactly. Should we find a soul first or wait until after we turn All Black's body into an undead? Tom asks, ready to put his idea into action. It would be best to have the soul already in the body beforehand. Lady Death replies after thinking for a bit. Since loyalty isn't a problem anymore, do you have any ideas as to who you want as All Black? Hearing her question, Tom starts thinking for a moment. Out of all the options he previously thought of, Arthur Pendragon would be the best of them all. 1. Arthur was a king, so he could very well help with the administration of his budding shadow organization. He could also help tutor Tom on how to rule properly. Although Tom will do his best to always remain in the shadows when it comes to controlling the wizarding world, he still has to make the big decisions. 
decisions that would be easier made with an experienced hand guiding his way. 2. He wasn't just a king but also a knight and master swordsman. Arthur would make the perfect sword spirit, and when he isn't a sword, Arthur could train Tom in everything he knows about swordsmanship. If All Black was a magic wand or staff, Tom would be choosing Merlin instead of Arthur. Merlin was still a tempting choice, but would he be able to use magic? Probably not. Either way, Arthur seems to be the perfect fit. Sure of his conclusion, Tom walks up to All Black and strikes him with an open palm, knocking the insane souls out. Disintegrate him like you did All Black and bring Arthur Pendragon's soul to me. Tom orders. Not needed to be told twice, Lady Death waves her hand and a black wave of death eats the insane soul down to nothing. Nodding at her work, Tom watches his deathly servant snap her fingers and a new soul appears. Huh? Where am I? This marks the end of part 27 of the story, I'm Voldemort. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe the video to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.